<clears throat> the following is a speech by Maurice, a prehistoric hog who, for seven years, has served as garbage disposal for the Flintstones household. <laughs> He's lived under the kitchen sink, behind a raggedy curtain, eating scraps of food, bones, and whatever else the Flintstones toss down the drain. His job is commonly referred to as trash hog. <laughs> In the prehistoric city of Bedrock, households normally have several animals working as their appliances. <laughs> Being a trash hog is the obvious, if not predetermined, occupation for hogs, <laughs> given their natural ability to eat a lot of waste in a short amount of time. The kind of labor performed by other animals is also dictated by their anatomy. Rabbits, for example, were better suited for TV antennas due to their long ears. <laughs> Pelicans were washing machines as, as they could hold gallons of water and loads of laundry in their beaks. Elephants are faucets, whether as kitchen sinks or in the shower, due to their trunks. <laughs> the animals work directly under the supervision of the woman of the house, which in Maurice's case is, of course, Wilma Flintstone. Maurice's speech is addressed to her. Friends and family would describe Wilma Flintstone as warm and cheerful, though the animals would characterize her as cold and inaccessible. <laughs> Maurice delivers this speech just as she's about to leave to, to, uh, the house to get her nails done before coming back to, be, to make dinner for her husband, Fred, who works at a local quarry. Maurice has, for months, been working up the courage to say what's on his mind. Excuse me, Mrs. Flintstone, I, I was wondering if maybe you'd have a second. Do, do you think this is a good time to talk? What is it? Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I just wa I just wanted to know if this is a good if if this is a good time to talk. Okay. It is okay. Oh, you you said okay. So okay, it is a good time to talk. Or I, can I can I start? Is, is this a good time? Yes. Just go ahead. Okay. Sorry. It's just that. <clears throat> Last night, you threw a really sharp bone down the drain, which, which hurt my throat. It really did. I, I, I don't know if you remember, but I've, I've, I brought this up before, how, how I prefer to get a heads up before you, before you throw a really sharp bone down the drain so I can prepare to catch it and swallow it and angle it in a way that doesn't hurt my throat. I said sorry. Yes, yes, I, I, I know you did say sorry. And, I, and, I, and, and I, I do believe that it won't happen again, but I, I don't know. After it happened, I had this sharp pain in my throat all night and I couldn't sleep. And I started thinking about my job here, about some things I've been meaning to say for a while. Okay, so I, I, I've been working here as a garbage disposal for seven years. And I'm, and I'm happy to be a part of the team. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of all the work, of all the garbage I've eaten over the years. And I understand that you're a very, very busy woman, what with managing the house and taking care of pebbles and all. But I, I'd like to talk about something that I've been thinking about for a while. Okay, so when I, when I first interviewed for the job, you raised the possibility of me eventually moving from eating garbage to managing the garbage outside. <laughs> the non-organic waste, separating and organizing the garbage for the city to pick up, as opposed to eating the organic waste under the sink. I didn't say that. No, no, you did, remember? I just said I didn't. I mean... 
maybe you didn't promise, but you said that I might be able to move on to managing the garbage. When I interviewed, I said, yes, I'd be happy to work as a garbage disposal, but I hope that there's room for growth. I hope that this entry-level job with the Flintstones will lead, well, somewhere. And, and you nod at your head. Okay, I'm not sure why you're bringing this up now. Is this still about the bone? <laughs> it, it, it is and it isn't. <laughs> it, it, it's related. The point, I think, is that there is a disconnect between what's said to me and what ends up happening. And that no matter what, I just keep doing my job. You not giving me a heads up about the bone, despite you saying that you would, is a symptom of something larger. And I just want to talk about the other symptoms, I, I guess. Like, like you saying I could eventually stop eating garbage. And don't, don't get me wrong, I, I, I love eating garbage, I really do. <laughs> What's waste for you is fuel for me. For, for, for you, garbage is a problem, but for me, it's, it's substance. And, and I, I mean, there, there's something poetic about our pact, and, and I get it, and I, and, I, and, and I realize I'm so lucky to have this job. However, I... I did go to school to be a record player. <laughs> Remember the conversation we had four years ago? Steven, your record player, that, that lovely little bird, so charming, he got really sick. And, and at the risk of sounding morbid, I mentioned that I went to school to be a record player. I was like, oh, so, so sad to hear about Steven, poor little bird. <laughs> I, I, I hope he bounces back. He must really like playing records with his pointy beak. That looks really cool. You know, I actually went to school to be a record player. Maybe I, I don't know, just, just throwing it out there. Do you remember what you said? You said, ha ha, maybe. <laughs> and I got really excited. It's not like I thought, oh, as soon as Steven's dead, I'll get to be a record player. But I thought I was at least going to get an interview. And I didn't. You just replaced Steven with another little green bird who, by the way, doesn't even know what he's playing half of the time. I'll be like tucked in my little hole eating garbage and I'll overhear Mr. Flintstone say, hey bird, play Slop Sinatra. And this new bird fully starts playing the Rock Beatles. Which is really frustrating because, again, I went to school for that. <laughs> but I feel like I wasn't even given the chance to, to be considered for this job because I'm a pig and people think, oh, well, birds have needle-like beaks and, 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 and pigs with their enormous mouths and stomachs, they just eat garbage. And, we're told, and, and we are told, well, that's just how it is. <sighs> and, we're, and we're told that, well, it's not like birds are inherently better than pigs. So, okay, so th th then I wonder, well, 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 then why do they get paid more? <laughs> People are like, well, their jobs are, are required more sophisticated skills, skills that they possess from birth. <laughs> so as a pig, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I can obtain those skills by going to school. I can make up for the fact that I'm no bird. All the while knowing that people will be like, oh, well, no animal can play music like a bird but I'd actually be better at that job than any bird. Because A, I know music and I actually like it. And B, I'm not the obvious choice, so I'd, I, I'd be eager to show you what I can do. I wouldn't just coast thinking that my job is a birthright. I know I don't have a beak, but I'd get a little stick and I'd enjoy playing music and I, and I wouldn't even care if there's a party and I have to work till two in the morning or if Mr. Flintstone has to invite Mr. Rubble <laughs> over and they stay up all night drinking beer listening to music. I'd be delighted. Meanwhile, the bird won't play anything after 10 p.m. because he has to wake up early and it's like, well, Mr. Flintstone doesn't want to listen to music at 8 in the morning. <sighs> then there was the issue with the answering machine. When that bird presented a resignation letter, pretty much boasting that he got a job in radio after half-assing it here, I expressed interest in that job. 
Again, you said, maybe. Okay, I knew that that job was more of a long shot. I didn't go to school for communications or anything. <laughs> but given that I've been working here for six years, I felt that at least I would get a shot. So I studied. I was like, okay, what does it mean to be an answering machine? <laughs> you pick up the horn where no one's home, and then you carve a little message on a slab, then you read it to Mr. Mrs. Flintstone when she comes back. I practiced. I didn't take any breaks from eating garbage. I'd never compromised that job because I know how much you rely on me on that front. But when I wasn't eating garbage, I practiced writing messages on stone, which by the way, I purchased despite my modest hourly wage. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because I wanna get reimbursed or anything. I'm, 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 I'm just trying to show you how committed I was to this possibility. <laughs> I'd go to the washroom and ask the pelican, hey, would you mind like saying something, anything at all so I can write it down and read it back to you? And she did, and I was good. <laughs> I almost never got a message wrong. I still remember the messages. Hey, Wilma, it's Betty. Can Bam Bam come over for a play day tomorrow? Hey, Fred, it's Barney. Can I, I can't make it to bowling tonight, sorry. <sighs> the pelican was like, so what's the deal? Is she gonna test you? Because if you do, you've got this, you're so good. And then I was really, really embarrassed when three days later, she was the one who told me that you hired another bird. Again, without so much as checking in with me. That night, while I was chewing on dinner scraps, the octopus was washing the dishes and he looked down the drain into my hole and chuckled and he said, ha ha, guess you're stuck eating garbage. How do you think that felt? <laughs> and why am I stuck eating garbage? Because I think you can't wrap your mind around me doing anything else. Because I've been doing this so well for so long. And why have I been doing this so well for so long? For the hope that I'll be rewarded with a better job. Instead, I've only proven that I'm a worthy and dutiful prisoner. When you see a hog, you see a garbage disposal. When you see a bird, you see whatever the hell that bird wants to be. A record player, an answering machine, a doorbell, whatever he wants, keeping whatever hour he wants. And then what happens? He ends up finding a better paying gig at another house and you end up scrambling to find a new bird. As for me, I just stay quiet, do my job and end up nowhere. I'm sorry, I know, I know you have to go to the salon, but I, 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 I'm, I, 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 I mean, I, I don't know. I, I hope this is a good time to talk uh, because this, this has really been bothering me. Okay, so I know that for both of those jobs, the record player and the answering machine, the setup would require me to be perched on a little stick. And yeah, I know that I'm a pig and I can't be perched on a little stick. But it begs the question, why does the worker have to be perched on a little stick? <laughs> Would the music sound any different if the record were played by a pig who knows every title, performer, and song, whether contemporary or classic, holding a finely crafted needle sitting on a stool? <laughs> I even offered to pay for my own stool. Again, out of my own salary, I said, good morning, Mrs. Flintstone. Sorry if this is too early to bring it up, but I was thinking that if I were to get the job, I'd need a stool to sit on because I'm too heavy for the stick, but no worries, I'd buy one. So I, I, I want you to know that there is no need to consider the cost of the stool when you make your final decision. <laughs> Do you remember what you said? Do you remember how you reacted to that? You just looked at me so confused, like you had no idea what I was talking about. And you just told me you were busy. For the longest time, I thought that I hadn't gotten the job because I brought up the stool at a bad time. Only now do I realize, no. It's not about how I conduct myself. It's about the way you see me, which comes from generations and generations of people seeing pigs as garbage eaters without ever asking for anything, and the world being handed to birds just because they look the part. You know who decided that the station for record players or answering machines was gonna be a little stick to perch on? Birds. 
Many, many years ago, the birds got together and confidently asserted that anatomically, they're better suited for those jobs. All the other animals just agreed to whatever they were told. But the birds were like, oh no, this is what we do. This is who we are. And the manufacturers took note. Soon, all the stations were being designed exclusively for birds. Meanwhile, I'm eating garbage and worrying about how, and worrying about how I'm going to handle my new job. Oh no, what if I start tomorrow, I would think. I'd have to leave in time to go by a stool and be prepared to show up in the morning. Oh no, if Mr. Flintstone eats late at night, then that means I'm going to be chewing up scraps too late and I won't be able to buy a stool. I might not even get the job. If only I had known that everything had been decided for me. What bothers me the most, or not the most, but deeply, and I can't stop thinking about it, is I honestly don't think you'd care if I were playing music or, or, or taking messages. But you do care about what other people think. You're scared that Betty Robble is going to come over, and instead of seeing a delicate little bird perched on a stick, ready to play some music, <sighs> she'll see a huge hog squatting on a stool. Never mind how much music I know. Never mind that I'm basically the ultimate jukebox in a pig's body. <laughs> because if she sees that something is slightly off, she'll think, oh, Wilma's house is out of control. I bet Pebbles is going to get pregnant before she finishes high school. <laughs> Taking a chance on me would reflect badly on you. That's what my wife thinks. <laughs> Except, of course, you wouldn't be taking a chance because I'd be really good at my job, and you know it. I mean, I, I, I do realize that I drool. <laughs> but I don't think that would be the case if I weren't in a, eating garbage all day. <laughs> Maybe on the first day, I'd, I'd, there, there would be some drool, but... Then I get used to a regular eating schedule, and okay, I know I smell, but... I know I smell, but that's just because I eat garbage all day. <laughs> when I first started at this job, you said that I might move on to managing the garbage, that I'd only be under the sink eating garbage for a couple of years. That's what kept me going as I ate all those bottles and apple hearts and bones, even though, yes, I do like chewing on ribs and T-Rex bones. But the hope is what kept me going. So how do you think I felt after two years when I looked out the window and saw humans in matching uniforms separating the organic and non-organic waste, emptying the bins into sleek trucks, hopping on and off each house? I said to the octopus, hey, for how long have humans been working on, uh, for the city, sorting the garbage outside? A couple of years, he said. A couple of years, I thought. No, that's weird. Why would Mrs. Flintstone promise me a job that doesn't exist? And I know that you didn't promise, but you did say maybe. And I... You said maybe, and I feel like you should know how much your maybes mean to me. How much weight and glimmer does a maybe have when that's all you have? I felt so stupid. It took me two years to find out that the job I wanted doesn't, wasn't even real. But how would I even know? I'm stationed under the sink, behind the curtain, and by the time I get out, everyone is asleep. So for two years, I figured that I was missing the animal that manages the garbage outside. The only reason I even saw the city workers dealing with the trash was that a bone got stuck in the drain in the middle of the day and the octopus was too grossed out to push through it. <laughs> so I climbed out of my hole and into the sink and then I looked at the window. The job that I thought would be mine, the job that allowed me to imagine a future, didn't even exist there was never going to be something better for me. Staying in my lane would lead nowhere. 
trying to switch lanes would be futile. When I got this job, I told my wife that at first I'd be eating garbage, but eventually I'd move on to management. She said, oh, that's wonderful, sweetie. I'm so proud of you. You should try and see if you can talk to the animal that has that job now. Pick his brain. See how he got promoted. Every night when I came home, I'd get into our pen, and she'd wake up and go, how was work? And I'd be like, oh, you know. And she'd said, did you talk to the animal that manages the garbage outside? Maybe he can give you a pointer, so at least let you know if there's an opening coming up soon. I'd say, no, I, I didn't. I got off work late, but hopefully tomorrow, if Mr. Flenso doesn't have any garbage for me to eat late. I could tell that the answer was less and less satisfying to her every time. Like, she didn't even believe me. So when I learned that there was no job, that I was going to eat garbage for the foreseeable future, my first thought was, what am I going to tell Petunia? And I didn't tell her anything. Instead, that night, when she asked again, I just got mad. I didn't even explain why. I just got mad at her. Not at you, at her. I got mad that she had gotten me a Mr. Garbage Manager badge for my birthday. I accused her of jinxing me. We went to bed angry. The next day, I calmed down and resigned myself to working as a garbage disposal. Petunia stopped asking me about the possibility of getting a better job because she was scared that I'd get mad at her. We didn't talk about it again until Stephen got sick. And suddenly I saw hope. A maybe that was shinier and brighter than any maybe I'd seen before. The chance to play music. But I didn't tell Petunia this time because I didn't want her to get her hopes up. I even got kind of superstitious. I thought, maybe the garbage manager management job didn't work out because of all of the anxiety and expectation. So I'll just keep this one to myself. Have it be my little secret. And the possibility made me so happy. I'd come back home and get in bed next to Petunia with a big smile thinking, oh, I can't wait to tell her that I'm going to be a record player. Then you replace Steven with another lazy, entitled bird who takes everything for granted. Again, I was cranky when I got home. I walked into my cramped, windowless cave, tossed my hat to the floor. I don't even like hats. <laughs> but as pigs, you're told that you're, you're supposed to spend a full day's wages on a hat in order to look sharp, because you won't be respected unless you look sharp. I was so mad. Petunia had no idea why and I couldn't stand to tell her. This went on for months, until finally, I began to come to terms with the fact that I'll never be anything but a garbage disposal. A trash hog. The answering machine job was a naive fantasy. Mrs. Flintstone, you has caused a fraction in my marriage. <laughs> I brought all my anger and rage from work to my home trickled down on fairness. I told Petunia I hated the food that she made for me. That made me feel big because I feel so small here. I just hope she can forgive me. There are two kinds of hogs in this world. The first are the hogs that are content to stay under the kitchen sink and eat the garbage for their entire lives. The second are the hogs that dream of a better life and work to make it happen. Now that I'm embarrassed to eat garbage, my father did it, my grandfather did it, and I've been doing it for seven years without so much as complaining even though you toss sharp bones into the sink without even telling me. And the shards hurt my gums and scrap my throat. But things could be worse, I guess. And look, I haven't forgotten the day when my stomach was really upset and I asked you if you could hold off on the bones for a day. And you did, and I'm grateful. 
I know that in other houses, they just keep shoving garbage down the sink that they wouldn't care. So, okay, I shouldn't say that I'm, that, I, that I'm the kind of hog that dreams of a better life. But why not dream of a different life? Why can't things be different? Convention. That's the reason why I'm eating garbage. Even when you compliment me, the point of the compliment is to keep me in my place. Good hog, you ho good hog, you say when I swallow a pan load of scraps in one bite. Good hog, good hog. I didn't realize until recently that this is a tactic. And now I'm hurt every time I get a compliment. I mean, sure, I'm, e I'm good at eating garbage, but so are the elephants who work as showers. By rewarding me for a job you know I don't want, you imply that I'm meant for this job and nothing else. Good hog. You tie my identity to the service that I perform for you. A good hog eats garbage, right? Otherwise, you just say good work. The hog is the work and the work is the hog and that is the problem. What's worse is sometimes I'd say, dear God, sometimes I'd say, yum, yum, my love scraps. I just internalized that, and from my, just me being in my little hole, my little cage, I thought, well, if I excel, if I seem happy, I'll escape. <laughs> yum, yum, I love scraps, I'm such a coward. <laughs> but you know what, I feel sorry for you. I really do. Okay, maybe I don't feel sorry for you, but I, I, I feel a kind of kinship, because, because you're also trapped. You're also trapped. You're as much of a, as a prisoner as I am. I heard you that cold night five years ago when you got home late from the supermarket after, I'm sorry, it's, I'm, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry if bringing this up is a low blow, but I heard you haul in bag after bag of groceries, the wind howling, the snow flying through the door. Mr. Flintstone was moving around the rabbit in tennis ears trying to watch the game. And as you were putting away the groceries, you told him how cold your legs get in, the, in your little white dress. And that you were thinking of making clothes that would, make, that would cover you up a little more. Mr. Flensom was just like, what? <laughs> he hardly even looked up. But that didn't keep you from sharing your idea. I could tell that you were really excited, but also a little nervous. You told him that you wanted to cover up your legs in the winter, and then you walked over to the kitchen table and put down some slabs with some sketches on them. You told Fred that you designed a skirt with a stretch down a fabric that would cover each leg. You called them pants. <laughs> they wouldn't interfere with anything, you assured him. They wouldn't change who I am, you said. And, 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 and you also said, I think a lot of people would be really into not wearing rags when it's cold, especially women who are always wearing little dresses. Just because, well, why the hell are we wearing little dresses? <laughs> you asked him what he thought, and he just said, well, I don't know, it just seems weird. He glanced at the slabs for two seconds, frowned, and then he laughed. He couldn't back up his opinion with any facts. He didn't elaborate. He just said, I don't know. It just feels weird. And then he left the room. He stayed in the kitchen for a bit, sitting at the table, looking at your drawings. So beautifully carved in stone. Then you picked them up and shoved them down the drain. But I want you to know that I didn't eat them. I kept them. When you left the kitchen, some of the other animals laughed at you. And I won't name names, but it was the octopus. <laughs> But I think that your ideas are really inspiring. And I have the carvings right here against the wall of my little hole as a reminder of what could be, as a reminder that you're not a bad person, you're just also trapped. 
So, sorry to get so personal. I, I, I just want you to. Sh I just want to show you that even though I'm mad, I also understand that I've been wronged for the same reasons that you've been wronged. <clears throat> okay. So in conclusion, I am mad about these incidents. <laughs> how you handle these jobs, but I guess I'm more mad at the system that keeps me eating garbage, but also keeps you keeping me eating garbage. I know you can't change the system, but I, I, I want you to hear me out and, 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 and know what I've been going through and how hard it was for me to bring this up. And, and that I don't blame you completely, but yeah, you are complicit. <laughs> Which sounds harsh, I know, but what can I say? I'm, I'm hurt and I'm frustrated and I'm still eating garbage. Is that all? Yeah, I think so. Uh, thank you for pretending to be Mrs. Flintstone Pelican. I, 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 I hope I haven't kept you from doing laundry. <laughs> nah, that's okay. When are you gonna talk to her? I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I feel like saying it out loud on itself just made me feel a lot better. And, and this all ha happened so long ago, so maybe, may, may, maybe why bother, you know? Maurice didn't realize that the new record player, a bird named Jason, had heard the whole speech. That night, Jason went out for a drink with his bird friends while Maurice was still eating garbage. Jason's friends asked him how work was. It's whatever, he said. Kind of stressful because some trash hog was going nuts about how he wanted my job. He doesn't get how stressful it is being a bird. Like, Imagine if I didn't get this job, what would I even tell my dad? Whatever. <laughs> I'm just stressed out about his shitty energy. But I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I just, I just, I'm too busy and I can't dwell on all of that. I just, I just have to live my life. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah.